Hey gang, welcome to another Worksheet Solutions walkthrough for the worksheet, Epoxide Synthesis. So you're in Epoxide land. You've probably watched the Epoxide Synthesis video on Joechem, the first one or the second one, ideally both. You tried to practice, but you're looking for some answers. Well, my friend, you are in the right place. We're gonna be stepping through the worksheet. I'm gonna show you how I arrived at every single product, uh, you know, mechanistics, uh, you know, flow in this worksheet. So enough of this. Let's do more of that. Okay, gang, so now let's tackle the first three of the first five problems in problem one. Okay, so remember, when we attack epoxides, one thing that is critical for us to know uh, and to execute the regiochemistry, right? Making sure we actually do chemistry on the right carbon, in the right area, right, in the right region, is identifying our uh, environment is either basic or acidic, right? That's key. And sometimes, you know, don't be embarrassed if you're having some trouble with it. It's something that took me a long time to kind of fully wrap my head around. So if you're here, I'm gonna try and, if, and if you're, that's one thing you're confused about, I'm gonna try and make it very clear and hopefully, um, you know, uh, de uh, you know, de shroud the mist of, uh, you know, acidic versus basic. Okay, so in this first example, I hope we, so we see we have an epoxide, right? An epoxide being that, uh, Three car, you know, that three atom ring with oxygen in the middle. So uh, I say middle, but you know, it's part of the three atom ring. So in this first, uh, you know, in our arrow, I hope you're seeing that we have a negative charge, right? We have hydroxide, right? So in a bronze and Lowry sense, we are in a basic environment, right? And in a basic environment, you only have negative charges, right? And in an acidic environment, you have, you're either neutral or you're positive, and in basic, you're neutral or negative, okay? So remember, in basic environments, we, you know, we're going to be using the strongest nucleophile, nucleophile available here. That's going to be hydroxide. Uh, water is our source of workup in case we need to protonate, th protonate things up to being neutral. And remember, in basic environments for epoxides, we attack the more sterically available carbon. That doesn't really matter here. We have a symmetrical epoxide. So what's going to happen here? doesn't matter if I attack this carbon here or this carbon here in the epoxide. I'm going to come from the underside, right? The dashed side, if you will. I'm going to attack a carbon and my leaving group will be this CO bond. It will go up on oxygen. So my product here will initially look like this. Whoa, that is a fat wedge. It will initially look like this. But like we mentioned, if I'm showing you the full thing, water is our source of H plus here. It's not H plus, right? But that's kind of what it is. So there will be a little proton transfer like that. And to save board space, because I am limited on real estate here, I'm going to erase that and just show you that product right there. Okay, so moving on to the second one. So what I wanted to do here, so if we take a look, right, we have an epoxide, it's asymmetrical, right? So we need to make sure uh, we do our analysis to ensure we get the regiochemistry correct with our, you know, our attack. So I wrote H plus on the worksheet, but just to give you some example, right? If I put in H2SO4, I hope you know that that is an acid, right? So that is a tip off, there's H plus. Really you're looking for someone to either show you H plus, H3O plus, or they're gonna give you an example of an acid that produces or is a source of H plus. So this is obviously acidic in an acidic environment. So again, I'm not saying this is part of the problem. It very well could be because people use H plus or H3O plus to just say, hey, I didn't pick a specific acid, but here's just, you know, acid's gonna be there, okay? And in this case, we wanna use a non-nucleophilic acid, like we would not wanna use HBr because then Br minus becomes a nucleophile that could attack. So anyways, tangent aside, here's our example. Remember, in the epoxide videos, we showed in an acidic environment, this oxygen gets protonated first, so I will just show that happening first. Remember, we can draw resonance, and in drawing all the resonance, we see that the carbon that's going to get attacked is the carbon that's the best nucleophile that can stand on its own. So since this carbon is more substituted, it has the stronger delta plus on it, okay? So, our nucleophile is the CH3OH. So our attack will look like this and electrons will kick off right there. I didn't draw any stereochemistry here. So stereochemistry is just 
not part of this problem. Just make sure you get everyone connected the right way, AKA get the regio chemistry correct. So what I like to do is I like to keep this as my home base right here. And this is my dot carbon. So I know I have this methyl down. Well, actually, eh, it doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna draw this methyl up. Then I'm gonna draw OCH3 with a bond to hydrogen and a plus charge, just right off the bat, just to show you everything, the nuts and bolts. And then we're going to have this right here, this OH. I drew it like this because this CH3OH has to come from the back side, right? So technically it would come from the back side attack here, force this methyl group up like that. I'm just trying to illustrate an anti-relationship right here. Anyways, like I said, stereochemistry is not a factor here. However, uh, there would be a little cleanup here. This would go away. And that's the product you are left with. But like I said, stereochemistry doesn't matter there. Okay, third problem of the first five. Again, acidic environment. I wanted to show you you could have phosphoric acid. That's another uh, you know, acid people will throw in because it's good, it's non-nucleophilic, it's not gonna get in the way, it's just going to give you H plus and then leave everybody alone. So I hope you're seeing, okay, since it's an acidic environment, I'm attacking the most substituted carbon. That carbon is this carbon right here. So ethanol, the oxygen specifically in ethanol is going to attack right here. The, oh, sorry, forgot to, I always forget this. Right, we're, we need to make sure this is a good leaving group. This is gonna be protonated first, then we attack, then these electrons will function as our leaving group. So remember, be very careful. So it's always easy to go, okay, we still have a wedged OH right here. But be careful, because right here, this ethanol right here, and I'm going to skip the workup step, needs to be attached, oops, as a wedge, because it had to come from the back side. Had to come from the back side, back side of the leaving group, which was a dash, so it must be a wedge. That means the methyl group got forced down to be a dash, okay? I know it's a really weird thing to think about, but that's how that goes. Okay, so let me erase this. We'll do the last two, finish up one, and chug on to two. To round out problem one, we see our next example. I hope when you take a look at this, so this is where I think things can might be a little confusing, right? So if you take a look at this, when you see kind of a pair like this where you have a negative charge and then the neutral version of that uh, molecule, in this case, right, we have methoxide and methanol. I hope you can compare this or think of it like this. When you see this, I think it's every universal people think hydroxide, negative. Right, I want you to think negative charge or negative component, basic, okay? So when you have this, this type of situation, this will be your nucleophile because it's a negative. It's, it likes positive things more. And this will be your source of workup or H plus if you will, okay? So if we take a look here, since we're in a basic environment, we're thinking let's attack the more sterically, uh, the less sterically hindered carbon. I was gonna say the more sterically available carbon. So our nucleophile is this right here. I don't know why I boxed it, but I did. So we're gonna be using the electrons on the oxygen, and this is the carbon that is more sterically available. So let's come in from the backside, which means we will be attaching met the methoxide component as a dash. We then kick off the C oxygen electrons as the lone pair going to the oxygen at first. Right, we have OCH3, and then we have the ethyl doesn't change up here. We will initially have just a regular O minus, but like I said, you will get, uh, this will do a little acid base reaction, and I'll show you it just for completeness, like this. And then to save space, I'm going to erase it, and just wanted to show you that's, you know, from start to finish, that's where our nucleophile came from, that's where the workup came from, there we go. And down here, this is the more traditional, you know, conditions you would see, hope you see that this is just basic conditions. So again, we're attacking the more sterically available carbon. So it's a straight line example, right? We're not in a ring, and we have the epoxide as dashes. So when we have the hydroxide attack here, right, we're picking the more available carbon, technically these carbons are both secondary, right? They're the same amount, degree of substitution. However, you have this giant T-butyl group. That is going to force this hydroxide away from attacking this carbon, right? 
I know it's not directly on that carbon, but it's next door. It's, it's bulky and branched enough to where it causes a steric issue. So this is the carbon that is more sterically available. So initially, and I'll show you the acid base, uh, I'll show you the, the initial reaction aftermath. So luckily, these alkyl groups are in the plane of the page, so we don't have to worry about them. I can draw this, O minus, right? This methyl group is still here. I just have to attach this OH as a wedge to make sure I have the OH attack from the proper side. And then really quickly, you will have a very, I was gonna say uh, short and fast, short and fast acid base transfer between water because that's our source of H plus, our source of workup. So your product will be this right here. Okay, so that rounds out one. I This worksheet, I wanted to make sure because epoxides are weird and then you have to kind of wrangle with some people having trouble with acidic and basic environments. So I would say these are tamer examples. Check out the final exam as well as the second epoxide video for some like really good epoxide examples. But this, if you did this and you're feeling comfortable with them already and you're thinking to yourself, okay, why are these so easy? It's just to make sure we're all, and again, I don't think they're like super easy, but I just wanted to make sure everyone's on the same page and can complete epoxide reactions, identify acidic environments, identify basic environments, understand what that means in epoxide land. So if you're looking for a challenge, second epoxide video and the final exam. However, that's a different conversation. On to problem two. Okay, gang, so first we're gonna tackle letter A of problem two. All right, so if you take a gander up here, you see that we need to draw the mechanism. We're given the reactant, we're given the product, we have the conditions, we have everything we need to know to draw this mechanism. So the very first thing we should do, since we're doing epoxide, you know, in addition to an epoxide, we need to figure out which environment, right? That's gonna help us draw the mechanism, it's gonna help explain the regiochemistry we're seeing, it's the key to everything. So, if we take a look here, we have CH3OH, methanol. I think you can obviously see that's, you know, it came, you know, it, uh, the, the methoxy part comes into play right here. However, is it basic or is it acidic? And we have perchloric acid here, if you're gonna flex some of your gen chem naming abilities, but, right, this is just a source of H+, and it's non-nucleophilic, right? When this, when H+, is, you know, consumed over here, see it, you know, the perchlorate doesn't factor into the reaction. It's not going to attack anything. It's just going to kind of chill out and watch and just hang, right? So it's a great choice for an acid, but long story short, I've killed the point, you know, I've beaten the point to death. It means we're in an acidic environment. So that means we're going to protonate this oxygen. We're going to attack the more substituted carbon because it contributes more to the overall resonance hybrid because of its you know, the, the you know, more stability it provides uh, in, in resonance. So, for the, you know, for the mechanism, what do we do? So, the first thing we need to do is we need to actually show the protonation. So what I'm gonna do, oof, I'm not too well versed in the, this is not correct, not correct. I just, before time, ahead of time, I did not, look at this Lewis structure, but just know this is just a protonation step. That's, again, this is technically not correct, but protonation step, really it's just, you know, you could technically sub in H3O plus here, but really we're just, and I'll make sure this is correct on the solution page, but we just need to protonate and get H plus on here to protonate this to be a good leaving group, and that is what is going to happen when you have an abundance of H plus floating around. Okay, we also need that because we have a subpar nucleophile, but now because we have this protonated, we have resonant structures that now contribute to an overall hybrid. We will see, you know, I'll show here, this carbon has the larger delta plus on it between this carbon and this carbon. So that's the carbon we will attack, and we will attack with methanol. So we come from the backside, backside of the leaving group. What's our leaving group? Well, it's the carbon oxygen bond right here. So if I draw an arrow over here, what's the aftermath? The aftermath is we have a wedged OH up top. And think about this, we had to come from the backside. So this methanol, this methoxy piece is now attached as a dash. Oxygen with an 
H still attached with the CH3. It has a positive charge. We will take care of that. And the ethyl group had to be forced up to be a wedge. Okay? So, we just need some cleanup to get to our product. You can see we have the right regiochemistry. We just have an extra H plus floating right there. So, you can use whatever you want to really clean this up. Realistically, you probably have the most methanol right here. This is a strong acid, so its conjugate base is super weak. You could use the ClO4- if you wanted to. doesn't matter. You just need any thing. I was going to say living thing, but like, don't want to get into that debate. Uh, right? We, you need any molecule to come by and pick up the extra, the additional H+, leaving you with the product we see above, the wedge OH, the dashed OCH3, the wedged ethyl, box your answer, put a smiley face next to it. That is problem 2A and on to 2B. Okay gang, 2B and this worksheet is over. All right, so if we take a gander up here, again, we're getting the reactant product, the conditions, we need to supply the mechanism. So we take a look here, since we are doing an addition to an epoxide, we need to identify what environment we're in, basic or civic. And I hope you're seeing that this looks very similar to water and hydroxide. And if you're wondering why I'm using a slash, could have easily just used a comma, just using some different, I don't know, just felt like using slash. Anyways, so this is saying basic conditions. And remember, as opposed to acidic conditions, when we are dealing with an addition to an epoxide in a basic environment, well, hold on one second. Whoop. Trying to get rid of that reflection on the board. Um, it was down there. Uh, we attack the more sterically available carbon, or saying it a different way, just to be annoying, the least sterically hindered carbon, right? So, again, these look like secondary carbons here. However, right, secondary because attached here, attached here, attached here, attached there. But we see this odd, bulky, big T butyl group that's going to cause our attack to be at this carbon. It is more sterically available, right? This highly branched neighboring substituent does deter the ethoxide from attacking here and it will attack here. So to draw this mechanistically, it is going to be rather short and sweet, a nice ending to a worksheet. So we will have ethoxide come in, we will attack this carbon, and from the backside, the backside here is a wedge that will come into play in just a second, leaving group, right, the electrons in this bond go on to oxygen, right, I'll keep my home base right here, let me fill in my substituents. So I will have a wedged O- minus up top, I will have a, or sorry, dashed O minus up top. I will have a wedged ethoxide. Make sure you always attach the atom that did the attacking. It's going to be oxygen in this case. And up top, right, we just need to, you know, do some work up to get this neutral. We will get that from ethox, you know, ethanol here. Let me make this a little bit more convenient for myself. Simple acid base reaction. And draw it down here. H O E T Turkey foot, kind of small, ethyl group, product down here, mechanism done, worksheet done. Okay, gang, like I said, if you're craving more epoxide practice, I would say this is good to get your fundamentals, your, you know, your understanding how you attack epoxides based on the environment in order. If you're looking for advanced practice with this, please check out the second video of epoxides. Maybe you've already watched it, but if you haven't yet, check it out because I handpicked a lot of those examples. I wanted to make them difficult from, you know, the regiochemical standpoint as well as the stereochemical, more so the stereochemical uh, point of view. So check that out. Check out the final exam. Good questions on there involving epoxides. If you're watching this video, that means you supported Joe Chem and I cannot thank you enough. I hope it's been the tool you were looking for to accelerate and succeed in organic chemistry. I'm so happy you're using it now. I hope you're using it until your organic chemistry career comes to a close. But if anything, I hope to see you all in the next video.